10 p.m. here on TV3. Welcome to the Late News. My name is Grace Hamwa Asari. That building is now made out of four bedrooms of the main structure, the main house. A living room, a dining room, kitchen, a family room, a library. Tonight, we tell you why President Akufado is being criticized for appointing the immediate past Director General of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Kwame Wusu, as board chair of the Ghana Revenue Authority. We'll delve deeper into the story later. Do stay with us first. Let's take a look at the stories that have been topical and trending today in the highlights. In the highlights tonight, the Office of the Special Prosecutor has brought up new charges against Member of Parliament for Boko Central, Mahama Ayariga. The new charges, which mainly hinged on the abuse of public office for private gain by the MP, come on the back of an ongoing suit of Mahama Ayariga. Also, Ningo Pram Pram NDC Chairman Michael Kwete Tete has picked nomination forms to contest the party's primaries. He will contest against incumbent MP Sam George. On the international front, Russia flew a fresh shipment of advanced air defense equipment to Turkey on Saturday. The Turkish Defense Ministry said continuing to implement a deal that is likely to trigger U.S. sanctions against a NATO ally. The ministry said a fourth Russian cargo plane landed at the Madrid Air Base near the Turkish capital Ankara a day after three huge Russian Air Force AN-124 planes offloaded equipment at the base. Many thanks for joining us. Let us do the big one. In the big one tonight, President Ekufuadu has been criticized for appointing the immediate past Director General of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Kwame Wusu, as board chairman of the Ghana Revenue Authority. The appointment late letter signed by the Executive Secretary to the President, Nana Bedietu Asante, and dated June 18, 2019, Kwame Wusu was asked to acknowledge his acceptance of the post in 14 days. Though his responses are known, many have criticized the president for the move. Kwame Wusu was hit by controversy while head of the GMA when it emerged the hard, he had allegedly used over 66,000 cities for kitchen cabinet. This was after he defended the renovation of a two-bedroom cantonment residence, which he called a colonial style at the cost of 1 million cities despite concerns the amount was too high. So let's listen to the former Director General of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Kwame Wusu, as he defends the renovation of his two-bedroom cantonment residence, which he called a colonial style at the cost of one million cities. And a basement. That is the main structure. We also have a guest house, which should be fit a Director General for that matter. When you can have a guest of your counterparts that they can stay, that one is a one bedroom, a dining room, a living room, and a kitchen and uh, a porch that has also been erected. And an outer house was done, and the whole floor of grass has been concretized with the same amount of one million. It's also an issue has been raised with regard to Director General having 11 air conditions. That I consider mediocrity. The places that I listed to you, each one of them to have an air condition will be 13. So the 11 is, is really not enough. 
And by the way, we don't put them all together. And if you sit, some director generals have a house allocated to them and have even a separate guest house for entertainment. And if this director general or any other director general of Ghana Maritime Authority who superintend over the maritime industry in Ghana cannot have a four-bedroom or five-bedroom, then I say it's mediocrity in their mindset. We must think big. Let's stay a while longer on this story and speak with Adam Senan, who is co-chair of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption, and he's joining us on the phone lines. Thank you, Adam, for joining us on News at 10. And thank you for having me. So, Adam, what do you make of this appointment by President Akufuado? Well, it's troubling. Um, it's troubling. I can't understand um, why the president will make a choice like this. Indeed, I'm wondering whether his advisors have taken into consideration the facts surrounding the um, scandal that he was involved in, the fact that the investigative report that the Minister of Transport was supposed to have conducted has not yet been put out for us to know whether he has been cleared. And in any case, when this transpired, it was clear that Mr. Usu does not have a strong grasp of good corporate governance. Otherwise, you don't walk into such conflict of interest situations like he did with his hotel, etc. Mm. Um, it is worrying because it appears as if there is no, there's a lack of respect for the sensibilities of Ghanaians with a choice like this. So it's a very troubling situation. Mm. But m many have argued that it is possible the reports on the investigations have cleared him and that's why the president has gone ahead to appoint him, which he is privy to um, reports of the investigation. Just share in that same view. Well, I wouldn't share that view. I think that if that has happened, any advisory team should tell the president that, you know what, because this gentleman was embroiled in this situation, make sure that that report is put out into the public space mm. so that the good people of this country can understand that he has been cleared and therefore it's a suitable candidate for such a position. But without having done that, that is why I have a concern that it appears that there's a lack of respect for the sensibilities of Ghanaians. Otherwise, the right thing to have done is to make sure that that report and its findings have been put out so that all of us can see that we don't have a challenge with this kind of appointment. In any case, is he the only one? What are the credentials? And the many other Ghanaians with competent credentials who could handle this? Why this particular gentleman? So I, I don't think that um, it's one of those decisions that many of us are going to find very acceptable. If that report has been completed, it should have been out there long ago so that all of us have a good context within which to assess this particular decision. What does this mean to the fight against all forms of corruption? Does it in any way undermine the fight? Yes, it does to the extent that that report is not out there. We don't know it has been cleared. It will be as if uh, this is a slap in the face of all of us who have been saying that the right thing must be done. Um, because clearly, in those previous in incidents, he got himself into conflict of interest situations. He has not been cleared. I mean, that is separate from the fact of whether something has gone wrong in terms of procurement processes, etc. The fact that he just could not appreciate that you can't allow an entity that you have some affiliation and connection with to then provide services um, suggests that he may not be in the position to adequately chair boards in this country. So it's a decision that, that, that really undermines our faith in what the president has stood for over the, uh, over the time. Mm. What would you want to see done about this appointment going forward? He's yet to respond to the suggestion. What would you want to see done going forward? Well, I think that the first thing that the presidency ought to do is to put this appointment on, the, on hold until they have cleared up the issues surrounding um, the past incidents that he has been involved in, or whether he has been cleared or not. 
it does not send the right message mm -hmm. to any of us uh, in the anti-corruption fight or as, as citizens of this nation. I think this appointment ought to be put on hold. Let us have the air cleared on whether he's been found culpable or not. And in any case, as I've pointed out, even without that investigation, the evidence suggests that he doesn't have a good understanding of good corporate governance to the extent that he could walk head on into conflict of interest and not even be able to articulate why this happened. So mm -hmm. I don't think that this is one of the best choices the president is making. All right. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Adam Senanu is co-chair of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption. This is News at 10 on TV3. We're back with more after this break. Don't go away. The Food and Drugs Authority, FDA, on Wednesday arrested a woman known in real life as Elizabeth Togbo but parading on social media as Mama G for the sale of some products used for vaginal care and sexual enhancers. The FDA, in a statement signed by its chief executive, Delise Daku, said Mama G was arrested with the assistance of personnel from the Criminal Investigations Department at her shop in Medina near Rollins Park. Mama G's products, which include herbal formulations are set to give women who use them the ability to enhance their sexual experience for the men they engage the products according to some is the answer for women who want to obtain financial and other favors from men they go to bed with Drugs Authority FDA on Wednesday arrested a woman known in real life as Elizabeth Togbo but parading on social media as Mama G for the sale of some products used for vaginal care and sexual enhancers. The FDA in a statement signed by its chief executive Delise Dakun said Mama G was arrested with the assistance of personnel from the Criminal Investigations Department at her shop in Medina near Rollins Park. Mama G's products, which include herbal formulations, are said to give women who use them the ability to enhance their sexual experience for the men they engage. The product, according to some, is the answer for women who want to obtain financial and other favors from men they go to bed with. While working the phone lines to speak with head of public communication of the FDA, James Slate. When we do so, we'll get through to him and find out more on the arrest by the FDA. You're still watching news at 10 on TV3, also live on DSTV channel 279. Now to other stories now, mining giant Goldfields Ghana has commissioned the reconstructed 33 kilometer road from Takwa to Daman in the Western region. The road, which costs $27 million, is the largest public infrastructure project funded by the Global Gold Fields Group, a report by Eric A.J. The rehabilitation of the 33-kilometer Takwa Daman Road was inspired by Gold Fields' shared value project of leaving a positive footprint in its operational area. The road is suspected to significantly impact the lives of over 40,000 residents by facilitating easy movement possibility of the springing up of new businesses and boost income generating activities among communities. At a commission, CEO of Goldfield, Nick Holland, said the rehabilitated road will help boost socioeconomic activities for communities. We think it's going to improve the safety and health of everybody who uses these roads, employees and others. And also, it's going to result in a multiplier effect. In other words, it's going to create feeder industries that first and foremost will serve our mines, not just our mines, but other mines in the area. And then in time, these businesses will actually f flourish in their own right. They won't need us. They'll create additional industry over time. So I think this is a pivotal moment in our existence. 
Western Regional Minister Kobio Chidakumensa said in order for communities not to wait on government for project, a strategy of public-private partnership is vigorously being pursued. It is extremely important to note that government attach a lot of importance to the provision of infrastructure using its own annual budgetary allocation and also seeking funding from other sources, especially development partners. Consequently, a major strategy as a country is to seek partnerships. Traditional leaders in the beneficiary communities applauded gold fields for rehabilitating the road and entreated them to extend it to their town roads. A resident of Huni Valley, Messiahin, was full of praise for gold fields. The road does not get muddy anymore when it rains because it has been tired. We now apply it with comfort. The road was rehabilitated by four local contractors and is suspected to last for more than 20 years. So in the mining sector, government loses in excess of $190 million annually as a result of the ineffective implementation of mining laws and payment of royalties. Players in the mining sector say there is the need for a complete overhaul of the Minerals Act to reduce revenue loss in the sector. Ghana's mining industry is one of the oldest in the sub-region, dating back to 1860 when European concessionaires imported heavy machinery and began working in the western areas of present-day Ghana. Despite centuries of hosting major mining companies, Ghana is reported to have benefited little or nothing from the profits of the companies. The coming into being of the Minerals and Mining Act mandated mineral companies to pay mineral royalties of 5% of the value of gold they mine to the state. This is paid to the large tax units of the Ghana Revenue Authority, which is then paid into the Consolidated Fund. Royalties have become a large source of government revenue over the years, but experts say the country can earn more if they are rightly collected. There is a law which stipulates that mining companies who do have the operations in forest reserves are supposed to pay 0.6% more in, in addition to the 5% royalties that they've paid. So, but if you look at the studies on how many of these mining companies have complied with that, you realize that it is really, really low. On an average, instead of them to pay 0.6%, if you calculate an effective average, um, average tax rate, they are paying about 0.2%. So who tells you that there is a 0.4% lack? So for instance, if you want to give the example of Shirano Gold Mines and then um, um, Golden Star Resources of Pristia, when you want to look at their um, 2016 production and then you do want to look at um, the realized um, prices for gold for that year, if you calculate the effective the tax rate, you realize that instead of them to pay about 0.6 percent, they are paying on an average of 0.2 percent. So, which means that the the, the gap of 0.4 percent translates into about um, 190 million US dollars, which is huge money. So, um, if we are um, we put in good measures in order to ensure that there is compliance. We will be able to reap more as a nation. A former CEO of the Minerals Commission, Dr. Tony Irwin, said mechanism for the collection of royalties should be reviewed. I don't think the problem would largely come from uh, the mining companies. It is probably the mechanism because you can make the policy, you can make the regulations. The mechanism to implement it must also be made. To make it effective. Mining consultant says Wolashime believes there is the need for strict regulations in the sector. We started mining gold in this country centuries ago and it beats my imagination why we don't have a mining uh, 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 revenue uh, uh, management act by now that should be looking at how we can apply whatever is coming, whatever mega uh, uh, benefits that we are getting from this sector, how we apply it to the benefit of communities which are bearing the brunt of this mining activities. It beats my imagination. 
Away from the mining sector, the Office of the Special Prosecutor has brought up new charges against Member of Parliament for Boko Central, Mahama Ayariga. The new charges, which mainly hinged on the abuse of public office for private gain by the MP, comes on the back of an ongoing suit of Mahama Ayariga. The special prosecutor had begun the prosecution of Boko Central MP after charging him for fraudulently evading tax and dealing in foreign currency without a license. The court had struck out three charges leveled against the MP, leaving Ayarga to answer to the charge of using public office for private benefit. The new six charges would see a solidification of the only standing charge by the office of the special prosecutor to have the MP answer fully to the issue of the use of his office for personal profit. The MP in a new suit is alleged to have collaborated with a public officer for the public officer's private profit. Mahama Yariga is going to answer to charges that bother on his acquisition of three Toyota Land Cruisers with a loan from Parliament. The MP is accused of evading taxes after he paid a duty of just a little over 6,000 cities, which he imported three Toyota Land Cruisers instead of approved duty of 35,000 cities. The special prosecutor accuses the Member of Parliament of selling the three Toyota vehicles which were purchased with a loan from Parliament, meant for its use as a public officer. So let's go back to our earlier story on the FDA arresting a woman known in real life as Elizabeth Togbo but parading on social media as Mama G for the sale of some product used for vaginal care and sexual enhancers. James Latte is the head of communications of the Food and Drugs Authority and he joins me via the phone. Thank you, sir. You're live on News at 10 on TV3. Thank you very much. So what is the offense of Mamaji to warrant her arrest? Uh, well, uh, Mamaji is selling products that, uh, as per uh, the Public Health Act, Act 851, she's supposed to get them registered, approved, before she can sell them. Because the law it indicates that if you import, export, manufacture, produce, or distribute, any medicine, cosmetics, medical devices, and the like, you are supposed to get them approved before you can sell them. Mm. But she's into the sales without approval from the FDA. Additionally, she's advertising the product, which also has not been approved by the FDA. So these are the issues. So wh wh why is she currently? She's been granted bail. That was mm. on Wednesday. She was arrested on Wednesday with that, that same day. I was told she was granted bail. Mm -hmm. So have you been able to take her products to the lab for testing and what was the outcome? Yeah, you know, because it is an investigation being initiated by the police, samples that were seized are with the police. Mm -hmm. So uh, during the investigation, the police may release some of the samples to the FDA or any uh, choice of lab that they decide. And then that analysis will be made and the results will be given to the police and they pick it up from there. And is the FDA looking at prosecuting her apart from just the arrest? Come again. Is the FDA looking at... Is the FDA looking at prosecuting her apart from the arrest? Well, that will depend on the investigation of the police because it's a criminal offence. Mm. So once it's been handed over to the police, they will decide whether to go ahead with prosecution or not. Mm. James, you see, the, the discourse in the public domain is that mm. many are asking how different her product is from similar concoctions on sale by peddlers as well as some men of God in their churches. How different is this and why is Mama G arrested when the others are still peddling or selling these drugs or these products? We have to, we, we have to look at the context. Uh, the point is this. If anyone is into any practice that the FDA believes falls within its jurisdiction, FDA will go into it. We did that with Balasan. We turned that in Mamaji. I remember about uh, somewhere early last, uh, late last year, we did that with a Nigerian 
also was advertising on social media. Mm. Okay? In his case, he, he was he was uh, sentenced to 15 years imprisonment. That was about three months ago. So the point is that once the FDA can establish mm. that the activity that is going on falls within its jurisdiction, they will act on it. Okay. And I'll, I'll have to say this. If the general public feels there's anyone they believe is into a practice that falls within the jurisdiction of the FDA, we might not know. They can alert us and we'll pick mm. it up. And if it falls within us, yes, we'll go ahead and do All what right. we have to do as an institution. All right. Thank you very much for speaking with us. James Slate is head of communications at the Food and Drugs Authority. Ending tonight's edition of News at 10 on TV3, which is also live on DSTV Channel 279. My name is Grace Hamwa. Sorry. Enjoy the rest of your evening.